Hello everyone, I'm Adam Papp again. Welcome to another week of There's a Place, the ASMR talk show that's it's good for your mind. You hear a lot about things that are bad for your body, but this is something that's hopefully going to make your mind healthy. Uh, and that's what so many people are searching for, a way to enrich their mind. And, and of course, that is... Uh, the genesis of uh, the religion of Scientology, which I wanted to talk about a little bit this week. <coughs> this is a controversial organization, you know, where no one's going to argue that. So I'm not here to talk about the human rights abuses or like the weird beliefs, just uh, something I observed. This weekend for brunch, I went to uh, had a really lovely time actually, the Scientology Celebrity Center which is a big uh, old hotel and it's 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 real gaudy and it's it's supposed to be you know kind of like uh this fancy public face of the religion for everyone uh, and they have a, a well-rated restaurant it's kind of pricey but on the weekends on sundays the brunch is cheap to get people in so it's like gotta hit this up so we pull up and the whole vibe was like very haunted house people want to do things that are scary on Halloween I would recommend going down to the Scientology Center you will actually be scared this guy we were walking up to the old hotel and this guy comes out and he's not in a uniform or anything and he's just he says are you here for the tour or for brunch and on brunch he's like right this way and we there was no doorman so you have to open this big heavy scary door and it creaks it's like, so you go in, and there's pictures of L. Ron Hubbard everywhere. There's uh, his office is is kept intact for when he comes back from space. It's being preserved for him and clean. Uh, we go in, and, and the whole time I'm thinking, I've seen the Scientology movie. I've, seen, I've read the Scientology book. Uh, these are uh, these people have taken no prisoners kind of attitude. I bet they're going to put something in the food. But I, I had an open mind. Got really nice spread of breakfast food, an omelet, uh, pancakes, and ravioli. You know, it's, it, that was the best thing actually. It's not breakfast without ravioli. But I load up my plate and we go outside, and just adjacent to us in the courtyard, really nice, beautiful courtyard, there was a woman who was being brainwashed. Like, straight up, there was a slit guy in a suit. He's talking to her, he's like, well, see, oh, well, that's because you get a negative charge. And so what auditing does, he's giving her the whole spiel, and she was into it. She was just like, yeah, yeah, tell me more. And she, I felt so bad. She had a little toddler with her, a little kid. And I went up to get more food, and he, he like, looked at me like little kids do, but he looked like, like I just felt so bad for him that he's going to grow up in this kooky, religion but you know who are, who are we to judge uh judge those guys after we left i'm sure they watched us on the security cameras a very strange experience I, I felt um a little maybe uh, irresponsible for not going up while that one was being brainwashed and, and just saying hey lady check out this organization this is you're going to lose your money you're going to lose your life to this you need to investigate what you're getting into, but I didn't. Uh, scary, uh, spooky place. The food was pretty good. It was pretty good. I liked it. I will go back. That's my review. Well, folks, let's get right into the interview tonight. We had a uh, little technical delay, so uh, the, the uh, conversation will be a little shorter, but that much more rich. Really got to get to the meat of it. Halloween is, if you're watching this time delay, this is the week of Halloween. You see we're in the graveyard here. Uh, and my guest tonight looks like he's, looks like he's right out, something right out from the Munsters. Please welcome, Pleasant Van Cole Terminal A, Colin Peterson. Yes. <laughs> hey. How are you, man? Hello, Colin. Nothing much, what's Good up? To, Good to see you. Good to see you, too. Oh, <laughs> hello, <Cemetery>. Wedland. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're in. Um, this seems like an appropriate um, setting for you, because you have kind of like a spooky demeanor. I mean, one of my best friends and I used to chain smoke in graveyards growing up. That's the way to do it, man. 
Which graveyards? Um, well, actually there's one in Long Beach off of Willow Street. I remember once we saw a big magnificent gray bird there standing on a tombstone as we were uh, just smoking camels. <laughs> Is that when you first started smoking? No, I started smoking when I was like 15. Uh, and this is a little bit later? This is a little bit later. Okay. Well, you know, if you keep smoking, you'll end up right back in the graveyard. I quit as of a couple of days ago. That's why I've got the coffee from this. Oh, yeah. I'm trying to supplant the nicotine with the caffeine. That's a good way to do it's it. It's a very delicate alchemy. I've become a sequence of unbalanced systems. Is this your first time trying to quit smoking? <laughs> Hell no. Yeah, it takes a long time. <laughs> it does. What's the longest you've ever quit smoking? In two years. Wow, and you still went back. Dude, I was living alone in Long Beach and life was very boring then. <laughs> <laughs> Long Beach will drive a man to do many things. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, yeah. some people get it wrong in Long Beach, that's for sure. What do you mean by that? Just sketchy shit. We just have a rough and tumble Snoop Dogg in the gangs. Oh yeah, Snoop Dogg. Um, I had this one neighbor, Chino. I'll tell you about that later, though. You're telling me about it now. Really? I didn't want to... Oh, you don't want to talk about it Well, I mean, I can tell you about Chino. Yeah. Um, he was this big predatory Cuban drug dealer who was obsessed, and a bunch of people I know have heard this story already, so if you guys are watching, just humor me. Um... No, but he was obsessed with my roommate and I. We moved in because he thought we were a couple and he thought he could get on, get in on the action. And uh, like the day we were moving in, he was like lurking on the steps and he was just like, damn my sex, little me, how you smell good? And we were like, oh fuck. Um, and so like, <laughs> so we're like, okay, this is obviously like a weird building. This guy's kind of freaky, but like, he kind of like, like likes us, so we might, uh have him protect us from scarier creatures that are out there. Um, so we nurtured like a relationship with Chino where he would like bust in like Cosmo Kramer and we'd make him coffee. He'd get really sad and just like sit and fucking bitch for hours. He'd be all like, um, he would be all like, people don't like Big Daddy Chino, they like Big Daddy Chino's drugs. I'm so alone. And then I was like, oh. And then um, the whole situation kindly, kind of uh, kindly ended when I was playing a Bronski beat record, of course he grew up in the 80s and Bronski beat is a very, you know, sensuous band to some. So he just got too excited. He got all sweaty, started smoking crack. <laughs> just like busted it out. And he was like, oh, this is a sexy drug, you want some? It makes you want to fuck. And then I was like, oh no, dude, get the fuck out of my apartment. Wow. Yeah, dude, it was a real hectic Long Beach <laughs> Bronski beat situation. That's... That's the kind of thing that you don't consider when you're like, oh, Long Beach, a little bit cheaper, you know, buy the beach, it's okay, not a, but if it's like, that's the kind of thing you don't consider when you make decisions on where to move, that's, is that you could live in an apartment really complex. Consider such things. Well, my neighbor is annoying because, like, his kid is noisy in the morning or something, yeah. and he plays guitar kind of loud. you're not getting loud. chinoed. Yeah, but, like, he, my, he never says hi to us, and, like, that's a little annoying. Yeah. But I'm... But it did. I'm not, right? Fuck that guy. It, like, it look at him and say, hey, what's up? Hi. He's and he just from, ignores you? Pretty much, yeah. What a dick. He is. He's a little scaredy cat. I know. He it's probably doesn't... Kitten. Yeah. Little cat. Little kitten. He's probably not a fan of all the loud records and weed smoke blowing into his uh, yard every morning, but... Well, fuck yeah. Keep it real. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So I'm just... <laughs> trying to have a well, uh, well-rounded neighborhood. Yeah. No, it's really good. How's the caffeine uh, working out, substituting? I mean, rather decently. Do you want me to sit? Oh, no thanks. Okay. I'll, I won't be able to sleep. <laughs> you, don't, you would rather not sleep? I mean, we're here now, and then I've got to drive back to San Pedro. So mm. I've got to be sharp for the um, Los Angeles freeways. You know, like a trooper. That's good. It's, it's dangerous out there. Speaking of substituting uh, yeah. advice for another advice, I'm realizing that uh, I'm not a young man anymore, so to say. I, I need to 
It's not realization. Well, yeah, but in all these different ways, but the way it's hitting me recently is I need to change up my diet. Oh, yeah. I'm eating fast food and cheeseburgers and stuff all the time, and red meat, and processed meat, hot dogs, my favorite food, cause cancer. It's the story hot dogs this are week. Your favorite food? Yeah. <laughs> Damn, dude. Besides Chinese food. Yeah, dude, I love the dirty Chinese. That's yeah. It's great. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I, um, for dinner tonight, right before show, got nachos. Let's see, chicken on the nachos. So you Instead made it, of carne it asada. Snack, and you upgraded it to full-on meal. No, it was, oh, the nachos were always going to be a meal. <laughs> Busted. <laughs> Damn, dude. I keep it real, Colin. Yeah, you do. I'm not, I'm not here to lie to, to anybody. I'm not, I'm not trying to to prophetize eating, drinking carrot juice and and all that stuff's healthy but yeah I, have I a mean, cheeseburger dude I grew up my parents owned a hamburger stand when I was growing up fun yeah dude <laughs> what kind of hamburger stand the good kind like a Tom's or something no no a Tom's it was an independent thing it was called the village deli um, down in Laguna Beach and all the Laguna Beach people will get their cheeseburgers there? Oh, yeah. All the little surfrette skim rats. They would go get cheeseburgers and, you know, have a general good time. It was like a, a I want to say California rustic. The wood was super old. It was like, it was like a little bar. Kind of like dinery, but small. Yeah. What happened to that place? Ooh, that shit went under. Um, because we were living there before it was like... Kind of gentrified before they like regentrified the place. Um, I mean, you know, rents increased, and that was that. <laughs> so, what your parents? Was this their whole life? Was this business? I mean, it was kind of foisted on them. They had to take it from my grandparents because at the time, my grandfather had like a cancer scare, um, so like they couldn't run the business. So we had to move down from. I was very young and moved down from Santa Barbara and fucking handled this. But it wasn't like a monolithic mission. It wasn't like um, yeah. my dad's equivalent to building Noah's Ark was running a hamburger stand, though he did love it. Mm. And close on what they do after. Uh, my dad still works at a sandwich shop <laughs> nice. in Laguna. And then um, my mom just recently became like a caretaker for the elderly mm. and stuff. You should cook some of those old people with cheeseburgers. <laughs> Dude, you're gonna give Larry a heart attack. You can't do that. I'm old. I can do whatever I want. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, well. Uh, R.I.P. As, as, as sit here in the cemetery. It's kind of got, we got like a kind of a sepia thing going on. Yeah, I like it. Dude, it seems like you like. What about all hair, Con? Seems like you like grandeur. I mean, that's yeah, <laughs> stylization. That's yeah, that's true. That's true. So, do you are you into like an old Hollywood kind of vibe? You know what? It's funny. Less old Hollywood. Um, one of the things that ended up really forging like what I enjoy aesthetically was um, growing up. I, I originally wanted to do visual art. Growing up. Um, I grew up with this one, there were three books that I remember really growing up. One was of these, um, the paintings in the Vatican. The other was of uh, Drewer's, um, the German printer Drewer, his illustrations uh, for biblical scenes and stuff. And then, and then the other was um, Doré's biblical illustrations. So like, when you have kind of like the classical mode of constructing an image, you, it's really almost kind of like sensual. You have all these like, tormented, twisted, like grinding, building, bending bodies, like in various states of rest and turmoil. It's like you can't, and like I grew up in a really secular household, so even as like an alien kind of to the Judeo-Christian tradition, I'm seeing these images and I'm like, this is beautiful, there is something divine here. Yeah, so grandeur. I mean, it speaks to the human experience, yeah. especially like in a late capitalist climate like we're in, everything's so banal, like who, who wants that? Every, I, I, I want either like the, the libertine waves of joy or 
the tragedy that's so fucked that you can't cre help but create like a beautiful image in your suffering, not this kind of like mm -hmm. banal, you know, fuck that, man. There's so much middle these days, I agree there with you. There is so much middle. Foo, we're talking about foo, foo is all made of goo. Yeah, great goo. It's all goo. texture. There's just, uh, before the show, we were talking about how many TV series there are. You said 400. 400. That's what I, I hear. I bet you they all suck. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. They're so average, like, just, the news is fine. Mm, yeah. You know Even the mean? news. No, everyone's no I'm, got I'm like just a... saying from, like, a watching TV standpoint. Yeah. What do you need Deadwood for? No, what's the one? Walking Dead. Oh, yeah, dude. I don't, I don't know. All of the, the, we recently got Hulu in my household, and, um, I've been watching, I think something about, you said that you were realizing that you're not a young man anymore. Yeah. Sometimes I get nostalgic and I go back to like the, the Arcadian Never Neverland that, you know, we construct after the fact as childhood. I've been watching Astro Boy, the original. What is Astro Boy? It was one of the first Japanese. The Japanese stuff. guy, yeah. because he doesn't wear a shirt, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Have you ever seen it? Because it's drawn <laughs> in the 60s, it's like this close to being an American cartoon, but not quite, and like everything's all like 1950s, 60s sci-fi, it's really cool. I'm gonna check that out. It's really cool, it's well drawn too. Very crude, very neat. Speaking of the 60s, because you remind me a little bit of Dracula. Yeah. Not like count, not like the evil, not like a modern day vampire, but like the Dracula from the 60s who's in the Monster Mash. Yeah. The you know what Dude. I mean? Like a fun-loving... Bobby Boris in the Crypt yeah. Kick of Five. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, who, what do you like better, the Munsters or Adam's Family? That's such a tough one, right? Um, what other thing like that? Actually, I really liked the Adam's Family more because I liked the way um, Gomez was kind of like a skeezy little guy who yeah, was just a sexy. Hot yeah. Dog. yeah. Uh -huh. No, but they were both that dirty kind yeah. of sexy. Like um, the monsters were bland. Yeah, the monsters were bland. They were like, like in the suburbs. The the Adams yeah. family were like. Plus, I like the Adams family because they're not directly horrified. They're not like legit monsters. Monsters. They're just kind of like. Um, they're creepy and they're kooky. Yeah, they're creepy and they're kooky. They're like the last like turn of the century, like weird depraved billionaires. You know. <laughs> yeah, you're right. They're way better. Yeah, they're kind of Monsters cool. are basic. Monsters has the, <laughs> the cousin, though, who's like a normal person, who's like real hot, but they all Stanley? say she's ugly. No, 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 Marilyn. 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 Sorry, Marilyn. I talk loud. No, that's, that's all right. <laughs> okay. You're filled with life. Yeah, dude. It's Boisterousness. Coffee. Boisterousness. Yeah, the coffee probably has something to do with it, too. Yeah. How many cups of coffee do you drink today? Innumerable. Okay. <laughs> That's rough, man. You're gonna have to quit that eventually. No, dude. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, what's all these uh, pins you got on your shirt? Oh, you have dude. a lot of them. Okay. Just like the crucial ones? Yeah, it's the Sex Pistols pin. Sex Pistols? Because which 15 year old kid didn't love them? <laughs> I, yeah, I like them. I listened to Never Mind the Bollocks three or four times ever. Really? I remember every time. Really? But yeah, it just didn't. It is one of those things. I still like it. Like, I still like it. I actually appreciate it more in hindsight. It's great. No. Yeah. Because I'm just like. Because you, you know what? It takes. The older you get and the more life weighs down on you, it takes, I guess, abstractly, like, courage to wield yourself with that kind of abandon and just be all like, fuck it. Like, um, I've been listening lately. The guitarist of my band and my roommate, fucking Lee. He's a man. Um, we've been listening to the Angry Simones a lot lately just because they're like fucking ridiculous. It's so much fun. There's so much heavy, sad shit going on in life that it's good to have fun every once in a while. Hey, so you live with this guy and yeah. you're in a band with him? Yeah, Lee and I share. We actually share a room. We have opposing like foldable bed things and then our buddy Brian lives in the front room. It's a one bedroom. Wow, that's so you're pretty much always together. Yeah, well, I mean, he's got a gnarly work schedule, and we both have like, um, you know, our personal lives. Those are pretty decent at communicating. And hmm, that's just the two of you in the band. Yeah. How, how do you, have you been in other bands with more people before? Actually, being in a band with other people was the reason why um, 
in like late high school, maybe directly after high school, um, a friend of mine turned to uh, minimal electronic music because we were in, my friend Anders and I back in the day were in this band called Supercomputer in high school. We wanted to be like Roxy music, well at least he and I did, but we all just sucked. <laughs> it was still fun though, but like um, creative differences kind of led to creative differences and then having half of the band be better technically and then Anders and I have more of like the, because rock and roll is about falling with grace, it's about like a weird, if nothing else, a weird assertion of self, kind of like, even back to the blues, like that music isn't technically perfect, but it's an individual positing their viewpoint as valid. So we kind of had this whole image, like image in mind, the other dudes were not too keen on it, and then we just kind of split ways, and then, you know, you uh, around that time, I started getting into like weird, um, like obscure new wave and stuff. Some of the shit sounded so pared down. Uh, bands like Gare Freud or um, Transparent Illusion, Kairos Connection, all that kind of stuff. It sounded so pared down, so simple, that you're like, dude, this fucker is just like hitting one button on a synth and making like a whole bass line or something. So then we started, yeah, fucking around with electronics and two pieces better. You both have more creative control. Um, and like, I couldn't really do anything for the longest time but sing and engineer voices on the synth, not even really play, you know, make beats and stuff too, but not really do much. So it's really, it's really hard to, when you're jamming with people and you don't have a band, be all like, oh, this is what I'm good at. Like, because people are like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So you like it as the pair. If you were going to start a side project, would you want it to be with a bunch of people? No, but I mean the question of like weird kind of like collaborative stuff or when you get deep into using, because we use Logic now, we're using um, a sequencer from the 90s but that shit broke, we use Logic now. When you get deep into the possibilities of Logic, um, the opportunity I guess to collaborate in different ways, because it's so versatile, it comes mm -hmm. up like, I've got this friend, she's been my best friend since um, high school, this chick, Jenny Davis, who takes all our um, band photos, and she wants to, she's been writing like little country songs, she just learned how to play the guitar, she grew up listening to like rad rockabilly and stuff, and I was like, dude, I want to like produce you, I want to like record you and, you know, make, make like a atmospheric universe, not dissimilar to the way Lee Hazel, what Lee Hazelwood did to Nancy Sinatra. Oh, uh, Raper? <laughs> did he? Oh, he was, that guy was a creep. Oh, dude, all the, all the old rockabilly and yeah. rock and roll grits were, Chuck Berry liked to shit on people and stuff. Oh, yeah, he, he well, he, um, he took, uh, took video I've, in the bathroom of his I've restaurant. Heard of this video, yeah. I want to go to this restaurant. And just He plays at it. Him. Yeah, and I would like, you know, Chuck Berry so invented have? rock and roll. What? So if he wants to see me take a leak, but I would let him. I think it's women, though, who he wants to oh. see take a leak. What's, what's so bad about me? I often wonder with the, the foot fetish and the, like, getting pissed on and stuff like that, feet and urine aren't gender-specific. It's not, mm. like, more progressive, like when the thing that you're aroused by is not tied to any gender. <laughs> you ever think about that? Like, a foot is a foot. Like, is my foot a good foot? Is your foot a good foot? I think yours might be the better foot. We need a connoisseur. Look at that. Mm. Get a little more length. Yeah, but no, you got the white for sure. sock. Yeah, no, I have I have good feet. I mean, yours are nice too, but <laughs> <laughs> but um, you know I mean? yeah, <laughs> they all look the same. It's not like the women's yeah. feet are a different shape. They're smaller. They're kind of more like dainty. Oh, but sometimes big women's feet is a thing. I've heard. I don't know about it. Yeah, dude. <laughs> you know, that's like a man, a manly woman foot. No, okay, like, um, oh, this is so fucked up. I don't know if I can say this. Yeah, come on, man. This is the kind of thing I'd whisper to you. Um, there's, <laughs> there's, <laughs> there was this, like, really fucked up chick that was like a, not so fucked up, but. Decently fucked up chick who was living in the same plaza that me and I live. 
She she had this like horrible tweaker boyfriend. Um, they had like an incident where one morning the tweaker boyfriend was just like, "Don't call the cops! I'm so afraid. I need my shorts." <laughs> um, but we were like, "Okay, that's like a situation." We started walking one day, and I think she had gotten pregnant. Her feet were bloated, man. It was like a. The, sand, the little thong sandals were ready to break. It was like Macy's Thanksgiving Day parade down there with big balloons. She was like walking on sunshine. <laughs> Maybe that's where they were hiding the tweak. Maybe that's what he was afraid of. <laughs> In the Your feet are so big. <laughs> oh, God. You had a lot of interesting neighbors. Yeah, dude. You, maybe you should get a better realtor. No. Or something. No, you know what? It's like, if, because like, that's what happens when you go to areas that haven't been gentrified yet. And frankly, if these areas had been gentrified, Lena, I couldn't afford to live there. I mean, that's why we're splitting a one bedroom mm -hmm. three ways. That's why you need to, this is the trick to gentrification. You get into a place early and either buy it, your house while it's cheap, or get in some rent control, and then you can continue to live there when it gets nice. Yeah. That's the only way it works. Because if you're living there before, that's the most you can afford anyway, and the neighborhood's dumpy. And then when it becomes nice, then it's too expensive. I so right in the I, middle. I hope our neighborhood stays dumpy. It's... We have, is this a problem where you live? RVs just parked on the street, people living in them? Dude, no, we had, um, and parking was damn near impossible in the neighborhood. There was this, one of our neighbors, uh, he had this, like, weird buddy who was just, like, hard RV guy, and he actually parked up for, like, a month and then overstayed his welcome. They got into some kind of, like, um, bro, I never want to talk to you again, like, scenario, and then the RV guy just drove off, never to be seen again. Wow. I know. <laughs> That is not uh, a problem, that is an inconvenient truth. <laughs> well, hopefully there's another friend with a parking spot. But these, have you noticed around LA, there's all these RVs parked. These like 70s RVs. Dude. There's a tour bus at the end of our street. A tour bus? Like the kind of tour bus Toby Keith would have. Like this huge tour bus. Damn. And somebody's living in there. Dude. It's hard. Someone's record deal went south. <laughs> all, all they were left with was the tour bus. They also have like a nice muscle car that's parked right behind it. So maybe this guy had money and like lost everything. I think that might be the case. Wow. Maybe what band do you think he was in? I'm going to guess Taproot. Who? <laughs> Taproot was a rap metal band from. Yeah. No, dude, I was going to say some fucked up numbers. Edema. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Orgy. Lincoln Park. <laughs> My first concert was Lincoln Park. Was it really? At a Best Buy parking lot from for K Rock. Oh, dude. Calendar thing, yeah. Yeah, like a Maverick. You pioneered that. Yeah. You pioneered that sound. Mm -hmm. It was also uh, at the Westminster Mall. <laughs> <laughs> so good. That's a pretty hyper local mall. That is a hyper-local mall. That's the most hyper-local mall. They, the only location left of Todai. You know the sushi buffet? It's like the nice sushi buffet. No, dude, I'd stay away from sushi buffets. That's like one-way ticket to the diarrhea train. This is a good one. I don't believe, I'll believe it when I see it. Well, head on down to the Westminster Mall. Right there off the 405. And uh, Cafe 405. Ooh. That's what the food court's called. That sounds enticing. Hot dog on a stick. Your, that's your stick. The stick is your stick. I gotta eat veggie hot dogs now. I'm gonna get cancer. I think I'm gonna still continue to eat hot dogs. Dude, okay, everything's like fucked up. If something doesn't kill you, something else will. I'd rather be killed by hot dogs than uh, a lion or something. Yeah, dude, die with dignity like a man. Yeah. <laughs> If the Titanic is sinking, you will just be listening to the violinists and descending into the sea like a proud guy. Eating. <laughs> just eating your fucking hot dog. With just mustard. <laughs> With just mustard. <laughs> Dude, that's almost a raw dog. Although, if, if, you know what? If the ship's going down... I might spring for the extra toppings. I would do it. Yeah, dude. You gotta get, like, a relish or an onion. 
Chicago know. style. Yeah. Man, you're making me hungry. Do you want some coffee? No. Okay. I'm going to be awake all night. How late do you normally stay up? That's been a very kind of turbulent thing. Sometimes late. And what, does your roommate try to go to bed early? What? Does your roommate try to go to bed early? I mean, sometimes Cause... Lee, Lee has to. He's been getting a lot of hours at work. So, like, he's... And they've got him working early shifts. And, like, uh, I remember... Because I used to be, uh, once upon a time years ago, I was an opener at Starbucks, and it was around the time my first, like, really active band was kicking. And I had this really turbulent girlfriend. This was when I was 19. So I would... On a given evening, I would on like a day, I would work in the morning, sleep during the day, play a show, argue with my turbulent girlfriend at the age of 19 till it was the next morning, and then I'd just drive straight to work. You said drive to work. Oh, I used to have a motorcycle. Yeah, scooter. I had a scooter Vespa. And did you uh, have to do the eyeliner and the dark hair and the all black back then too? <laughs> How long has this been going on? Oh, dude, no. When I was um. Well, when I was young, my friends and I, because there wasn't, when we grew up small beach community, there wasn't much in the way of alternative culture. There was like a couple vintage stores and then this uh, one punk rock record store called Underdog that got closed. But my friends and I would always hang at the vintage stores and we'd get free shit, so we all looked ridiculous. Like I used to have long hair and my friends and I would dress all like disco to bum people out. Polyester shirts every day. Yeah. I mean, yeah, mm -hmm. look at you. I have, I have lived a life. Yeah, um, I'm sure you have. But, but when did you start wearing all black? Um, I mean, around high school, because it was just like... Because oh, so a... my friends and I also, for fun, like, two, like, actually three in particular, Jenny Davis, Anders, and little Jenny, big Jenny, Anders, little Jenny, we would all break into these abandoned houses, because they were just, like, abandoned houses, and sift through... Um, the articles, sift through the articles, almost like little archaeologists. Um, I actually made love in one of them on a bed that someone got shot on. Whoa! Yeah, but all black was utilitarian because, like, we were always getting dirty and, you know, having a good time. Made love on a bed. How did you determine that that's what happened? Well, so like, um, it was actually a really kind of interesting night, like, um, there was this one dude back in the day, because we'd, the other cool place to hang out was this cafe, that's where, like, everyone would rendezvous. Abandoned houses and cafes. Yeah, dude. <laughs> I know, it sounds pretentious, I know. <laughs> Whatever. That's my life, bro, that's my lifestyle. Wait, I want to hear about this murder man. Okay, yeah, so, like, um, I had this buddy, Ren, who was... I think he works in medicine now, but at the time he was trying to go to school for photography. So me and my girlfriend at the time, he took pictures of us um, dressed up actually very much like Gomez and Morticia in this abandoned house. Um, and then he bailed and we kind of stayed. And there's this bed, I remember when my friends and I initially broke in, it was the eeriest place. Like it was just as if time had stopped. There was still electricity flowing through the house. There was still a fridge with items. It was like a there was a paper from like a couple years ago. So we were like, there's something going on with this house. Um, and it obviously belonged to like an older, older couple because they were like, um, like first printing, kind of like pulp, pulp, pulp crime novels everywhere. Um, so this bed had like these kind of weird stains and it's like, you know, old abandoned place. You figure like stains happen, no upkeep. Stains happen, maybe something's dripping. So, um, Definitely did, you know, stuff. And then I remember hearing that the reason why that house was abandoned was because a guy, it was a homicide suicide. This guy shot his wife and then shot himself. And it was uh, held up as evidence. The cops just hadn't done anything with it. It was kind of forgotten. <laughs> I can remember. I know, dude. That's fun. Yeah. That was something exciting happened to me. What? Something exciting would happen to me like that. Dude, okay, fucking... You're, you're always, you're in the underworld. You got these, these neighbors. What the... Oh. Are, where are we now, Adam? Ooh, this looks like a haunted house, maybe? That's pretty cool. Yeah, I like haunted houses. Yeah. I would live in a haunted house. Not the kind 
where it's a maze and you just walk around and people bother you. Yeah. That's my biggest pet peeve in the world. Maybe you don't like the I hate those. scary mazes? I hate them. Because this is what happens. The person jumps out and they're just surprising you. Yeah. And then they don't buzz off. They're so, ooh, scary. That's so <laughs> annoying. You're doing a little hobgoblin dance. That's how they go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, give me a break. I know, you're basically just like a fucking glorified mime. One time I was at, uh, last Halloween, I was at Del Taco late at night. Sketch. And this guy, right? Did you love a good story that starts like that? Yeah. This guy comes in dressed like, um, the Joker, you know, like scary Heath Leather Joker. <laughs> yeah. And he orders, and he's just like, yeah, the reason I'm just telling everybody, is like, yeah, the reason I'm dressed like this is because I work for LA Haunted Hayride. Come down to Griffith Park. I'll scare the shit out of you. <laughs> what a dick. <laughs> and, what the fuck are you kidding? And then he asked if anybody has stogie, <laughs> which he thought was a cigarette, but as I'm sure you know, is a cigar. I know. Dude, are you fucking kidding? That is my biggest issue i hate this stove although i've got this friend greg who says stoge just to be like extra annoying i think it's hilarious stoge a clown got a stoge a clown would have an old scar though that was appropriate maybe he was still in character dude i like the way he was all pompous i'll scare the shit out of you Fucking muscle oh, I remember you from Del Taco. No, I'm not scared. Sorry. <laughs> exactly. Oh, no, a mummy. Oh, no. And then, like, he comes out. Dude, he, oh, no, fucking sorry. Del Taco, he'd probably try and scare you and then just shit his pants in the process <laughs> of trying. Well, keeping it spooky. Dude, speaking of spooky, I have questions for you, Adam. Oh, go for it. Um, so I was sitting with my friend Greg, a.k.a. Dr. Stoge, Greg, uh, in in the courtyard of our apartment complex <laughs> and we're looking at <laughs> one up, of your um, wacky neighbors i know dude greg's the man though and we're like looking up um looking up the because i was showing him because I was, he's like what are you doing tomorrow night and i was like oh this show and i showed him like a couple episodes little bits dude you fucking you hang out with mr da- uh, david lieberhart yes that guy's yes, wild. old friends he yeah, yes he is he's a wild man he's a wild animal <laughs> What's going on with that? What's going on with how he's uh, he's he's a spaceman. I don't know. He's he. I don't know. Dude, yeah, because my buddy. Uh, he's 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 a very uh, talented guy. Yeah. Very unique perspective on everything. <laughs> it's consistent. Yeah. Which is what's good. Because you know, my buddy Luca, who's kind of like this artist, he also like manages on mm-hmm. that. My buddy Luca, he's like this artist um, kind of guy. He. He would hang out with David Lieberhart, but David would dupe him into giving David rides. Oh, yeah. Do you, have to, do you get duped? Oh, yeah. Uh, I've, like I've driven him all over the place. We used to be in a van together. Really? So, yeah, so I've been all over the world with him. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> That's so good. Yes. Oh, well, uh, talking about the yeah. aliens and, and then his would cousins. Says, like, beware of the dick fighters. Mm-hmm, yeah. It's like a reoccurring motif. Uh, everything... He just talks. He's autistic, I think. Mm. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, Ooh. a lot of great people are autistic. But so he just, every thought he has, just every fact <laughs> about over and over again, trains, oh man, just every state we went to. Oh, this is where this train line used to run. That was my favorite train line. Every train was his favorite. Every single one. Except, yeah. Was I don't, he Thomas the Tank Engine? Ever? No, no, that's not a real train. He liked... He liked real trains. Oh, yeah. That's a thing, Western being into Union, trains. Pacific Union. Yeah, Germany's Illinois just, Central. Damn, dude. Things like that. Yeah, that's the thing, though. People that age... See, that is not that weird, though. It is no. weird to be into trains. With him, it's just, it just gets into this general ball of weirdness. But a lot of people are into trains. They're called foamers. Dude, I once saw um, a... What is it? Fucking Craigslist post in the personal ads that was like... Yo, dude, um, and, and I don't mean to sound homophobic, I'm just quoting the post. Mm-hmm. No, yeah, yeah, quoting it. It was like, hey, dude, no gay shit, I just need a J-O buddy to stand with me in the middle of my model train kit and just share, share a spank. <sighs> dude, some guy wanted to jack off back to back with a buddy and just like... And look at just toy trains. Rain, rain on the trains. 
have you seen those drawings that are like anthropomorphic airplanes and stuff that are all sexy? JJ the jet plane? No, they're like kind of like that, but like they have like lady bodies and airplane faces and wings and breasts and stuff. I can get behind that. Yeah. That's another thing where it's like foot fetish, where it's like kind of progressive. Yeah, kind of progressive because you're like, no gender there, just the foot. Just mm -hmm. the absolute foot. The plane. is It's gender, putting yeah. a gender to a genderless thing. It's almost like a weird platonic desire, the absolute form, the absolute plane, just striving to get that best plane to on. I don't know. It's strange. People are into some wild stuff. Yeah, people are crazy. People are crazy. What are you going to be for Halloween? Lee and I are playing a show, so like, when... Cover set? No, we didn't get our shit together enough to program. We wanted mm. to do the gun club, mm. which would have been really cool. A Captain and Tennille. Oh. No. <laughs> we together. No. Just a karaoke That'd track. Be pretty good, though. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm in a D trick. No, but I'm just going to tell people I'm Dave Anion from The Dam. Oh, yeah. He looks <laughs> like him. Or the MC from Cabaret. It's all the same guy. We're all yeah. one guy. You, you'd be so easy for you to be Dracula. You look just like him. Or Dracula. Drac. Drac. That, like the fun Dracula. The fun Dracula. The fun Dracula. He'll suck your blood. <laughs> yeah, he's like a goofy. And then we'll take you to Golden Spoon. <laughs> well, that's cool. Where is the show? We are... Um, we are going to be playing The at, Rickety Railroad. No, dude, no. at the Prospector in Lowell. Well, right that is... <laughs> wait, the Prospector is a Rickety Railroad. This dude, looks like the Prospector. This doesn't look like the Prospector! Wow, that's some divine... <laughs> that is some divine well, magic right that's there. Rest, California's galls. Um, <laughs> Yeah, dude, we're going to be playing at the Prospector October 31st with um, Band Apart Sellers and this band, I forget the name, but it, it's the guy from Dance Floor Disaster Movement from back in the days. Nice. Uh, that'll be fun. You guys, Terminal A plays around town a lot? Yeah, we play all over LA and then Long Beach. We used to do Orange County more, but like a lot of the good venues got kind of mm. uh, shut down. Well, cool. Well, everyone, check out. Make sure to check out. Uh, make sure if you want to, right? No pressure to no, check out your band, pressure. or do you want them come everyone to check us. out? Yeah, come party. Hard pressure? Are you kidding? Okay, I just always feel weird about telling people what music to listen to. I mean, yeah, but no, but it's a great band. Oh, Adam wanted me to ask you, a director, real quick. Before uh, he said, every time he sees you play before every song, you yell, "Let's fucking go." Yeah, that is Dude, What's true. up with that? Dude, um, I just want, well, it's like a weird dramatic pacing thing, right? Because, like, Lee and I are always also in between songs, kind of like, I always talk about just, like, really bummer stuff, because it's like, rock and roll's supposed to, because I grew up with, like, a 60s, like, baby boomer dad, mm -hmm. so rock and roll is always handed to me in a political context. It was, like, protest music in my time. So it's like, I want to talk about stuff, but also, like, the, like, sentiment juxtaposed with the let's fucking go and then just like beat. it's good it like it's jarring yeah get jarred by rock and roll well thank you so much colin for coming Dude, on the is show that it? that's it thanks everyone. for having me man until next time this is adam pap again oh, i'm sorry are we doing found something it. oh yeah we found it it's adam yeah, pap yeah. again reminding you that there's a place you can go and it's your mind good night